everybody, I'm Julie Lalu, uh, and today we're going to be grooming Alfie in my salon in London. Alfie is a Border Terrier, uh, he's a pet Border Terrier, so he's not the finest specimen, but he's still a really lovely dog, and he actually has a really nice coat as well. He hasn't been neutered, which means he's, he's managed to keep his texture, um, and he's got a lovely coat that will pull out quite easily, which is great. If you do come across a neutered Border Terrier, uh, usually they do maintain their coat texture quite well, so they can still be hand stripped, which is great. But if they, um, if they have changed coat or if they've got older and their coat has started to get softer, you might want to think about in the long run starting to clip maybe certain areas or even the whole dog if it becomes too much for them. But today we're going to be hand stripping Alfie. As we can see, he's well overdue for a hand strip. Uh, he's got what we call a blown coat, which means the coat has grown up um, and out and it is totally dead coat ready to just fall out, which is, makes it very easy. In the show ring, these dogs are never taken down as short as we would take Alfie. In the show ring, they have what we call a, um, a rolled coat, which means that every few days or so, we'd pick out a few layers of coat, and they'd always have new coat coming in, so they'd have a, a good layer of, of coat, several layers in the coat, meaning that they would never go quite as short. But for our pet border terriers, we can do them twice a year, every six months or so, and, uh, and they come up really nicely. So what we're going to be using on Alfie today is a few things. One of these little finger condoms, but if not, you can use a rubber glove, that's fine. Uh, the other is some simple stripping powder. And finally, I'm also going to be using a stripping knife on him um, uh, for the areas that are slightly harder to pull. So what I will do is um, put some stripping powder on him, and then I like to start on my top line. So when I talk about the top line, I'm talking about from the head to the base of the tail and I will pull that all out using my finger and thumb because that's the most likely place that we're going to get any breakage if we use a knife. So uh, I'm going to start by applying a bit of the stripping powder, it's just a very light uh, chalk type powder and I'll put that over Alfie. I just want to point out at this time that Alfie has not had a bath. Um, he has, uh, has come in as he is and I will completely strip him out and then if I decided to bath after I would just bath him with a little bit of an antibacterial shampoo, hibu scrub or something like that just to make sure that he doesn't, um, he doesn't get any skin infections or anything. They are much easier to hand strip if it's not a clean coat and the reason being is that a clean coat will, um, will just sort of slide out of your fingers a lot more and it just doesn't have the same grip as a, as a dirty coat. So, I've put the powder on, I'm going to start, and it doesn't really matter where you start because it's all coming out, and I'm just going to start to pull out his top line. And it comes out very easily, it's really easy to do, I mean, honestly anyone could do this, it's so simple. You don't need to worry too much, it doesn't hurt, when you're pulling out a dead coat like this, it doesn't hurt the dog at all. And you can see we're coming down to this lovely, rich texture and colour coat. Just pulling it out. When we're pulling out, we try and do small sections at a time. So I choose get an area that's clear and then just work out from that area, pulling small bits of hair at a time. Keep the skin taut. If the skin's moving a lot, keep the skin taut. You can see I'm just holding it and just pull it out. He's really got a very nice coat under there. The reason that we hand strip this dog, these dogs, sorry, um, is one, to maintain the texture of the coat, but it also maintains the colour. So if you were to clip instead of strip, what would happen is the coat would become softer and softer over time and it would also lose this lovely rich colour that you can see underneath. It would probably go quite a light, um, a light sort of fawny colour. Keeping the texture keeps them nice and harsh and waterproof, which is what they want because they are a dog that's meant to be, out, meant to be able to be outdoors all day if they need to be. Once you get going, it's actually quite satisfying. So once I've cleared away the majority of my top line, I'm just going to move down the sides. And just keep clearing it all away. It is a dog that should be totally hand stripped, so you don't need to use your scissors really on anything. 
Um, if you've got a dog that's sensitive around its feet or its groin, you could scissor around those, but you certainly wouldn't on a show dog. He's a lovely dog, you know, he's really well behaved. Quite often, you'll get dogs that are not this easy. He's very good. If you do come across a dog that really, really hates it, you need to consider uh, you know, whether it's fair to be stripping that dog or whether that dog should be clipped. So I would always be honest with the owners. If, they, if the dog really hates it, let them know. When we come to the belly, we can see that I can just twist the skin around and then it's quite easy to just pull all those bits out. Obviously, some dogs will have thicker coats and it will take a bit longer and you'll have to do slightly smaller bits of hair at, the t at a time. But his is coming out beautifully. Good boy. On our neutered dogs, what we do tend to see, specifically along the top line, is that their undercoat, undercoat may have grown up a little bit. And um, so when you pluck... The, the, the top line, sometimes you might get a few ball patches, uh, but it's not really something that you can help because it is really due to the neutering and not the groomer's fault. Good boy. So as much as you can pull out with finger and thumb, but then when you start to get to the slightly more tricky areas, like around the neck, for example, you can get a stripping knife. What you want is just a nice little medium blunt stripping knife. And you can just use it using your finger and thumb, grabbing pinches of hair at a time. So you can see I literally come in, use my thumb against the knife and pull back, always with the direction of the coat. So whenever we're stripping a dog, we always strip with the direction. Whichever way the hair, you, whichever way you pull the hair out that's follicle is the way it's going to grow back. So if you start pulling it the wrong direction, it will start growing back in the wrong direction. And not to mention the fact that it's also painful. So as long as we're using a blunt knife, which this is, uh, then you're not going to cut the coat at all. You're literally just using it as an aid to pull that coat out. And you can see it will still leave that lovely undercoat without any cut bits of hair. Obviously, the most pure way of hand stripping is finger and thumb, uh, and it will give you the nicest regrowth. But on an area like this, where the dog is a little bit uncomfortable about it, it's much more fair just to use a knife because it gets it out quicker. Good boy. Good boy. Nearly there. When you have a dog that's been neutered, one of the first areas that gets quite hard to pull will be the, the chest and the neck and the coat tends to get a lot thicker around there, so those are usually the bits that you might have to start considering to clip. Stay. Good boy. So you see, I'll just switch between using a knife and using my fingers, getting out as much of the hair as I can. So just pull out as much as you can over the thigh and then whatever we can't get finger and thumb, I'll come back with a knife. So now this is a slightly tricky area to get to, so I'm just going to use a knife. You can see it comes out really easily. You can push all the hair up.
over his bottom area. He's a really, really good boy about this, but you will come across dogs that don't like having their back end done, and it probably would be fairer just to thin the hair away. He's obviously not bothered at all. Again, you can see I'm just switching from finger and thumb to knife. Good boy, stay there. Good boy. We stripped out all the body and the legs, and it's all come out very easily and nicely. Now we're going to move on to the tail. Um, tail is done in exactly the same way, except we don't want to pull out every scrap of hair that he has. We want to leave him with a, a, a padded carrot tail. So just pulling out the long hair, leaving a bit of padding. Now obviously if it's totally blown and all you've got left is a bit of undercoat, there's not much you can do to leave some padding, but do try. It shouldn't be scissored. Some people do scissor the tail, but it should be hand stripped. It's very common that you'll have a bit of a bald patch over the violet gland, so don't worry too much about that. Try and leave a bit of covering on it if you can, just so it's not so obvious. Just. And the underneath of the tail should be Nice and tight, so no excess hair under there. Good boy. We stripped him all out and he looks lovely and clean and he's got a nice coat under there. Now we're going to do the head. So Border Terriers are supposed to have an otter shaped head which means that we leave them with a little bit of a padded beard and eyebrows. We don't want a long beard like a schnauzer, but we don't want a clean head either. Um, and again, we don't want long eyebrows. They are short, just little padded eyebrows. The ears should be totally clean as well. So same, same technique, just pulling the hair out. You tend to get a little bit of a softer line there and you can just pull those soft hairs out. Coming all down the side of the cheek. Getting all that hair out there. Taking the side of the cheek. What we don't want to do is come too far forward. It is a line from the back corner of the eye down. So nothing in front of that yet. And clear all that cheek and neck away. Good boy. Lift the ear up, get all of that hair inside the ear. And again, he's a really good boy about this. If they didn't like it, you could clip inside the ears, but he's not bothered at all, which is nice. Then over the top of the ear, I'm just gonna pull. It's slightly softer hair, so I'm gonna use a little bit more of the chalk powder on there just to give me some grip. And you'll see that those all pull out very easily. Hairs all the way to the end of the ear. You shouldn't need to scissor around the ear if you pluck it properly. It should all pull out quite easily. Got a lovely little clean ear there. Okay, so once we've stripped out all the ears and the sides of the cheeks, we can pull out the stop and separate those eyebrows. Come up and around the eyebrows, make sure it's nice and clean. We can also pull out the corner of the eyes so he can see. And then with our eyebrows, we just want to pull out the longer hairs. So obviously not all the eyebrow because we want to leave some there, but we're just gonna pull out the slightly longer ones. So that we've still got a little bit of padding. And the same on the other side. Just a little bit. Stay there, good boy. Good boy. Just a little bit of that eyebrow. So you can see it's just padding over the eyes. And then moving on to the beard. 
Again, it should just be padding. So we're just pulling out the slightly longer hairs. We don't want to pull it all away. We definitely do not want to pull it all away. We want the dog to have an otter expression. So we need to just pull the slightly longer beard hairs so it doesn't look like an old man. Good boy. It's ideal not really to use thinners here because if you start using thinners around the beard, what will happen is it will just get thicker and thicker and then it starts growing longer and longer. So it's much better to just try and strip it out. Terrier face. You're such a good boy, aren't you? So once your dog's fully stripped out and you've done the, the face, the final thing you can do is if you've got quite a thick undercoat, specifically again with, um, with neuter dogs, you're likely to have a thick undercoat, and you can do what's called carding the coat. So I use a fine knife for this and you just run it along the coat and you'll see it will take out good boy any loose dead undercoat i mean he hasn't got much at all he's got a beautiful beautiful undercoat but if you did have lots of dead undercoat and you had thick undercoat you could use your knife just to pull that out he's just got a bit in places not a lot at all don't know good boy And that helps with the shedding around the house as well. Good boy. So Border Terriers really are an easy maintenance dog. Um, you know, they rarely need even washing. They're not particularly smelly dogs. Um, they only need to be stripped twice a year for your pet dogs. They're a hardy little thing. Um, if you are going to wash them, it's best to wash them not around the time of stripping. But obviously, if you're a groomer and someone comes into the salon and they want their dog washed, then I'll usually wash it after the stripping process. Uh, but do be aware, if you, once you wash it, you'll have to go over it again because you'll get some hairs that stick up. Um, but other than that, they don't need much at all. Just a good diet. And that's it. And you'll have a lovely coat on them. As long as you hand strip them properly. Don't break the coat and try to avoid using thinners on them.